did you make of last night's semi-final? Uh, I haven't. Wa- I didn't watch any of the match last night. Um, I watch. Uh, I'll watch some of it um, this evening and then chat to, tomorrow uh, to Emily about the, the match, but I, I haven't watched any of it yet. Andy, not long ago now, how are you, how you feeling having had a little bit extra time to rest or practice? Yeah, I mean, I feel I feel good. Um, I felt good after after all of the matches and, and recovered fairly well from the, the two... Uh, Fairly long matches that I had against Dimitrov and with uh, with Burdich, so yeah, I pulled up uh, pulled up pretty well. But uh, yeah, it's a slightly different uh, preparation, obviously with the with the extra day. You get the um, the extra day rest, but then also you know you you're in a rhythm of playing every every day or so, so it changes the way you prepare a little bit. Um, but yeah, feel feel good. Do you have any thoughts on the fairness of that? Are you a believer that semi-finals should be played on the same day? Um, look, I think it's. I mean, I, ideally, yeah. I mean, you want the players all to to have the the same opportunity. But I mean, I was told that the player that's played the the second semi-final, I think, won like five or six of the last uh, last seven years. So. I don't know exactly who it, who it favours uh, favours more. Obviously, if you have an extremely long match, um, you would think that the person that had the extra extra days rest would it would favour them. But then, you know, a couple of years, Novak recovered from. I don't know how he did it because I I played against him in the semi final and I could barely walk a couple of days later. Um, but he recovered from a, a five hour match. Uh, and then won the, the final in six hours, so I don't really know who who it favours, to be Is honest. Is there a danger of having too long to think about it? Um, I think that that comes down to each each individual, really, and how you handle the the situation. Um, I tried, like I said, and watched the match yesterday, so I tried not to spend too long uh, thinking about it and try and just do the, the same sort of routine as I've been doing in, in the other matches and, and use yesterday as, as more of a recovery day. Um, and then I practiced uh, slightly harder than, than I would have normally uh, the day before a slam final today. And is this the best you felt mentally and physically on the eve of a slam going into a grand slam final? Um, I don't know. Um, to be honest, it's it's always very difficult, uh, difficult to answer those questions. I I, I don't know. I, I know that I've played well so far this this event. Um, each time I've I've been in difficult situations, I've I've done a good job mentally of finding my way um, to to get out of them. And um, yeah, my my tennis has been good as well. So I hope that that will be the case again tomorrow. You played Novak here three times and lost all three. How confident are you that that can change tomorrow? Um, well, I, I know it's going to be extremely difficult um, to win the match tomorrow. I know if I want to win, it will probably be be very, very uh, tough and, and challenging physically. Um, so I need to need to prepare myself mentally uh, for that. Um, but yeah, he he has a fantastic record here. He obviously loves the the court and the conditions. And um, yeah, it would be. Would be a big, big upset um, if I manage to win tomorrow. What sort, of, what sort of achievement would it be to to win three of the four slams if you could do it? Yeah, I think obviously, yeah, it would be it would be a, be a good achievement. It's um, I know winning any of the slams is is very is very challenging and, and tough thing to do. And like I said the other day, winning three or four slams like in this. Era seems like uh, seems like nothing because of uh, everything that the other guys have done, but it's, uh, it's a very difficult thing to do. So, you know, whether I win tomorrow or not, um, I still feel like my record here has been uh, has been a good one. Andy, you talk about a, a big upset if you were to win tomorrow. Not Novak said last night that there was no clear favourite. Do you disagree with that? Um, well. I was resp- I, I've never won against him here before. I've lost to him each time that we've played. Um, I think I've lost to him the f- last four or five times we've played against each other as well. Um, 
and maybe only won one set in those in those matches. So, yeah, I mean, it would be a big turnaround from, you know, the I played him a couple of times very close to the end of last year and lost pretty comfortably. So, for me, it would be it would be a big turnaround in in a few months if I was able to win. I'm not saying that it that it isn't it's not a possibility, but. It's going to be uh, very, very tough. And yeah, no, you're probably on the women's side as well. What do you make of the final that's going to happen in a couple hours here? And I guess how Serena has managed to dominate Sharapova over the last decade. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, considering how great a competitor Maria is, it shows you how, how good Serena is that she's managed to well, it's been something like 10 years or something since she lost uh, last time to her, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, but in a, in a one-off match with two individuals, anything uh, anything can, can happen. And um, I, would, I would certainly predict Serena to, to win the match if, if I had to. But, you know, as you've seen with Berdic beating... Uh, Beating Rafa here and also last year with Stan winning against Rafa, having lost to him however many times in a row it was, um, you know, there's there's always always a possibility there. And wasn't there any, any sense of curiosity about what was going on here last night? I mean, if I'm at a football match writing about one match and my team's playing in another, I always want to know what the score is there. Yeah, no, I, I knew exactly what the, the score was. I was at dinner checking the, the result to, to see see what was going on and I spoke to Leon um, as well who was who was uh, commentating um, on the match but I'm going to watch the parts of the match that, that, that I want to watch um, this evening um, get all of the stats from from the match that, that I think will, will be beneficial and go over it just like I have done um, every other match since I've been here this event but I didn't really want to sit for three, three and a half hours last night worrying about, about the match. I'd rather save that for, for this evening and, and try and conserve a little bit of energy and, and mental, mental energy as well, um, you know, for, uh, for the match. Andy, you're back in the, guaranteed back in the world's top four, regardless of what happens, and, and number three with a win. Do you feel you're you're back where you belong? Is that a nice feeling? Um, I feel like I'm playing playing well again. I think this this tournament's been been obviously important for me, um, just because of some of the the results uh, I had at the end of last uh, last year. And um, yeah, it's it's been an important week for me. Obviously, any time you're moving up the rankings, suggests that you're doing doing something well and yeah it shows as well that last year also you know although it was was a tough year it wasn't also that that bad um that with with one uh, one good tournament here that i could could move back up the rankings again so i'll just um yeah hopefully the the beginning part of this year where i maybe didn't didn't play my best last year if i can try and have some some consistent solid results um re-establish myself um, back at the, the top of the game and hopefully um, have uh, have another good good year. You had those, when you had those bad results you mentioned at the end of last year, were you confident you'd be sat here again in this position so quickly? Um, well, I knew that I needed to work on a lot of things, but I also believed that with, with the right attitude and, and the right work ethic and the right people um, behind me that I'd be able to to get back to, to playing um, my best again because there was periods in the year where I did feel like I was I was able to do it. I wasn't necessarily sustaining it for for whole matches or, or whole tournaments, and that was really what I needed to, to change. And, and to do that, I needed to, to just get a little bit a little bit fitter um, again, which I think playing all those tournaments at the end of last year really helped that. And then also put put in a good training block so that I could work on on any of the the weaknesses or the the issues I was having in my game last year, and um, I feel like I, I did that. This is, Andy, this is your Andy. first tournament. Since, this is your first major since the uh, back surgery, the first major final. Do you think this actually 
closes that chapter that you've actually got back to a level that uh, that you were at before the back surgery? Um, well, I think last year in the slams, I I felt like I, I played some some good tennis. Um, I felt like here I played well. Um, last year, the French Open was equal my best ever result, and at the French Open, which was which was good. And for me, it was really the the match with Dimitrov at, at Wimbledon was the one of the, the toughest matches of the year for me because I felt like I played a, a very bad match um, that day. But the rest of Wimbledon, I played fantastic. And also the US Open, I started to play well again there and just, you know, physically with the, the match with Novak, I, I definitely slowed down after the first uh, two and a half, three sets. And But I was playing well again, again there. So... Yeah, I feel like things things have been going in the right direction um, the last uh, last couple of months, and you know even towards the end of last year as well. But like I said, I just needed I felt like I just needed a period to to work on some things and find the 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 right direction again um, for my game. And hopefully um, this year I'll I'll continue to work on all of those things. Like even after this tournament's finished, keep working on the right things. Keep uh, yeah. Keep keep working hard, um, physically. Hopefully, stay healthy this year and um, see what happens. But it's it's been a good start to the year and hope uh, hope tomorrow's a good one too. Uh, Andy, um, whenever you reach this sort of stage at a, a slam and a final, there's always a sort of debate around where you stand personally in this sort of pantheon of British sport. I was just wondering who you would regard as the greatest British sportsman of all time, because I know that. You know, so, oh well, so. yeah. I, de I definitely wouldn't say that 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 would uh, that would be me. I wouldn't say that that would be the case um, at all. But I mean, in terms of the sports that I follow a lot and sports that I have a lot of respect for, I mean, like someone like a Joe Calzaghe. I think what he did in in, in boxing is uh, incredible and extremely rare. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, I don't know, any, any like a, a Rory McIlroy is incredible talent and will probably go on to, to do amazing things um, for the rest of his career. Um, I don't know how, how far exactly you, you want to go back, but, you know, Lewis Hamilton, what he's done has also been amazing. Um, I just know from, like, for for myself that I just I know that the time that I'm competing in just now is extremely challenging, and yeah, anything I achieve, I'm very proud of because of the the players that I'm I'm competing against currently. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I feel about it.